<coughs> so we continue with reproductive system in uh, standard 10. So we just discussed in the previous video about the male reproductive organs. So we discussed that how the sperm is produced by spermatogenesis in the seminal vesicle, seminoferous tubules. Then it travels into the <coughs> the different networks of tubules to the afferent duct and then from there to the different parts of the epididymis and from there it is passing to the sperm duct. From sperm duct it passes to the urethra and wherein there will be addition of three secretions. One is from the seminal vesicle which is going to give you the give the sperm the uh, fluid for mobility. The uh, Porosite gland which is going to give the alkaline secretion for uh, neutralizing the acidic uh, nature of the female vagina and finally is the bulbourethral gland or the corpus gland which is going to give as a lubricant uh, for we add as a lubricant to the uh, semen so semen was the ejaculation which is about 2 to 3 ml of white fluid which contains approximately 200 to 400 million sperms so uh, that is about the uh, male part and uh, now we talk about the female parts of the reproductive system. So the female part, so let's see the figure first and then we can discuss the different things about the figure. So, Okay, so it's almost done. Right, so So in case of the female, the first thing is these are the main primary organs which are the ovary. Okay, the ovary over here and the ovary over here. So two ovaries on both sides of the year. This complete part, this complete part is called as the uterus. Okay, this is of course the uterine wall. Of course, this this part, this part, all are uterine walls. These all are uterine walls. Okay. Over here, this is called as the OV duct. Okay, this is the OV duct. This part and this part is the OV duct. And this is the OV duckle funnel. Fun, OV duckle funnel. Okay. And uh, what else? Yeah, this is the vagina. Okay, uh, the a start point of the uterus is called as a cervix, with the start point of the uterus. So these are the major parts. The of course the muscular lining, we get out of DK, you can easily note that thing. So there is nothing uh, different than that. Okay, so let's start with the uh, female reproductive organs. The female reproductive system consists of following reproductive organs a pair of ovaries yeah, two pairs of ovaries a pair of oviductal or fallopian tube to convey the egg released from the ovary so whatever is the egg is going to be released from the ovary they are going to travel through this oviductal funnel and reach this place so that is the oviductal funnel or we can say the oviduct or fallopian tube it is also called as the fallopian tube. So this one is also called as fallopian tube. <coughs> uh, 
a sac like or a pear shaped uterus for the growth of the development of the embryo developed from the egg so once the egg is fertilized then the egg is going to remain in this muscular bundles over here the muscular part over here muscular walls over here which is the uterus which is a pear shaped structure where the baby is going to be conceived for nine months the fourth part is the vagina that is the opening through which the baby is going to come out also the opening through which the urethra that is the penis enters into the female body so the penis is going to enter over here where the ejaculation of the uh, penis that is the sperm are going to be released over here and uh, vulva the outermost part the outermost part of the female organ is the vulva similar to what uh, we can consider as a penis but not exactly the penis because penis has got that uh, sexual characteristics of getting er erected and all but vulva is just the outermost part of the uh, body of the female so let's see them one by one first is ovaries the two ovaries are small ovoid bodies that is oval shaped bodies which are two over here their peripheral part produces ova or the egg so the egg or the ova is going to be produced by the peripheral part of this particular ovary normally one egg matures in each ovary every alternate month so every alternate month one of the ovary is going to produce or mature one egg so सपोज यहाँ पे अगर जनवरी मंथ में अगर यहाँ से एग निकला तो फेब्रुवरी में यहाँ से निकलेगा मार्च में यहाँ से निकलेगा अप्रैल में यहाँ से निकलेगा ऐसे करके एवरी ऑल्टरनेट मंथ दी सो इन इन अदर वे अराउंड वी कैन से दैट ईच एग इज गोइंग टू टेक अराउंड टू मंथ्स टाइम टू मेक श्योर एंड बट द एडजस्टमेंट इज सन सच अ वे दैट एवरी मंथ वन एग इज रिलीज either by this one or by this one so definitely there will be such that they are uh, you know the maturity of the egg is being monitored in such a way that both the ones will both the ovary will not be releasing at the same time and at the same uh, means if one has released the egg then it will not be able to release for another two months time and so ek month ke baad mein ye wala kare so that's a natural kind of a cycle which has been produced uh, in the body <clears throat> a maturing egg contained in a cellular sac is called the follicle so the mature egg jo hai the egg which will be over here which will be matured it is called as a follicle so it will be having a covering and it will be called as a follicle as the egg grows larger the follicle also enlarges and gets filled with a fluid and is now called graafian follicle so the there is also stages in which the egg is going to be maturing so the stage of the maturing mein sabse pehle it is just a small follicle the follicle ke baad mein jab ye mature hone chalu hoga it will getting filled up with fluid and when it gets filled up with fluid it is going to be uh, called as a graafian follicle and when this graafian follicle andar hai to wo graafian follicle kya karega wo andar ke egg ko ripen kar raha hai usko mature kar raha hai usko राइपन कर रहा तो दैट इज वाई वेन इट इज फाउंड दैट दर दूल हैज गॉट राइप एंड एग हेज गॉट राइप एंड देन द ग्राफिन फॉलिकल इज गोइंग टू राप्चर ओके एंड इज गोइंग टू राप्चर एंड इज गोइंग टू रिलीज द एग विच इज अ मेच्योर्ड एग सो वेन राइप द फॉलिकल बल्ज इज आउट ऑफ द सर्फेस ऑफ द ओवरी दैट इज ओ जेनेस इज इज द प्रोसेस इन विच द ओवर प्रोड्यूसिंग सेल gives rise to the mature ovum so the process by which this particular matured egg is going to come out is called as oogenesis okay it is going to be called as oogenesis so what i happen in oogenesis is that the so first of all what we see is there is an egg a non matured egg present immature egg present in the ovary when the ovary uh, in, in that but that egg is called as a follicle that follicle when it is ready to mature it will yeah, there will be a fluid filled inside and that's why that particular follicle will become a graafian follicle 
Once it is in the graphene follicle, it will now ripen the egg which is there inside and it will bulge out of the ovary. If this ovary is there, it will bulge out of the ovary. It will bulge out of the ovary. It will bulge out of the ovary. And then it is going to rupture. And rupture will be under the matured ovary. It will be fake in the ovary duct. It is going to throw. And when it throws it, the funnel of the ovary duct is going to catch it and it is going to take it up into this particular graph uh, 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 fallopian tube we call it as ov duct so when ripen uh, so we read this again as the egg grows larger the follicle also enlarges and gets filled with the fluid and is now called a graphene follicle when ripe the follicle bulges out or bulges over the surface of the ovary oogenesis is a process in which the ova producing cells give rise to a mature ovum ovulation is the rupture of the follicle releasing the egg so that is the process by which it is rupturing and it is throwing the ova outside is called as ovulation it is ovulation so ovulation is the process by which the egg from the ovary is going to enter into the ovary duct so that is when the ovary is releasing the egg that is the rupturing of the graphene follicle and the and the uh, oozing out of the okay throwing out the ova is called as the releasing of the egg is called as the ovulation the released egg is picked up by the fimbrae of the ovitactal funnel. So fim fimbrae are nothing but the cilia kind of a substances, you know, hair-like substances, which are there in the funnel of this thing. So they are easily caught, okay, very softly caught by the uh, fimbrae or the, uh, we can say the cilia of the ovitactal funnel. And then it is going to be, place over here and by the slashing movement of the cilia it is going to push the egg from here to this position okay up into the ovitata so the release egg is picked up by the fibre cilia of the ovitacal funnel of the ovitata the remnants of the follicle persist for some time to convert into yellow mass called corpus luteum now this is the important part See inside the ovary, what happened was that initially, initially there was only one egg which started growing, enlarging, formed into fluid entering into it, forming into graphene follicle. Graphene follicle, when it matured, it went up and ovulation was ready, it will explode, it will rupture. When it will rupture, the ova is going to be thrown into the uh, ovitacral funnel. But ये जो part जो बचा है, the graphene follicle का जो part रह गया है, that particular part is going to the remnant is going to convert into a yellow mass called as corpus luteum. It is corpus luteum. Corpus luteum is the phase is is that particular graphene follicle का part. The part of the graphene follicle which is the remainant after the ova was being released or the egg was released from the ovary. So whatever is remaining over there is called as a yellow mass called as graphene or they are called as corpus luteum. Corpus is the body and luteum is yellow. So yellow mass is corpus luteum. It secretes two hormones. So the main reason of or to understand this is that the ovary corpus luteum jo hai, it is going to secrete two hormones for the female body there are the estrogen and progesterone so it is estrogen and progesterone so we had seen that in case of males the testosterone was the one which was produced by the Ludwig cells inside the testes here it is the corpus luteum is going to produce two kinds of the hormones for the female body that is estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen as was secreted by the follicle prior to ovulation and progesterone. Uh, we are just having one more thing ovum and egg difference so are the two terms one or the same so no 
all oa singular om are x but all x are not oa hence egg for example is a oom a uh, central yellow sphere plus the nutritive albumin and the covering shell and that are add, that are added to it as the oom passes down the oviduct and oom in just female gamete are the pro, or the proper egg cell without any extra part so egg is the complete part you know egg is the complete part it is uh, the oom which is central part of sphere is the oom and the white part is the albumin so yeah be what difference anyway it doesn't matter so you can just call it as an egg doesn't matter this week you can call it as a ova or egg both the next is oviduct so the next uh, structure what we are studying so we studied the ovary so what are the ovary parts so first thing is that a pair of ovaries present on the both sides of the uterus they are the one which are going to be having the egg and the egg we are going to mature in such a way that it will be alternate month pe egg ka uh, uh, ye hoga uh, evolution hoga yahan se evolve hoga ya to fir release hoga ya to fir if next month mein yahan se fir next month mein yahan se fir next month yahan se aise karke every alternate one month they are going to release the egg and uh, for really before releasing egg so there will be maturity of the egg this is going to take place so for maturity it will be follicle hai pehle follicle se wo graphene follicle banega by the addition of the fluid and then the fluids ke baad mein wo ripen hoga ripen hone ke baad mein it goes to the uh, outer part of the uh, outer layer of the ovary and then it ruptures it ruptures and it throws or releases the egg into the oviduct and the ruptured part what is left over is the corpus luteum which produces two kinds of or hormones estrogen and progesterone now we move on to the next part that is the oviduct the two oviducts also called as fallopian tubes so two oviducts the two oviducts over here which are also called as the fallopian tube or uterine tubes are about 12 cm long near the corresponding ovary each oviduct has a funnel shaped opening called oviducal funnel cilia lining the funnel help to pick up and push the released ovum into the oviduct subsequently the waves of muscular contraction or peristalsis of the walls of the oviduct push the egg down into the uterus so right from here this is the funnel of the oviduct which has got cilia on the ovary so it will be something like this there will be ciliated kind of a uh, epithelium over here so this particular ciliated part over here the first thing it is going to hold the egg catch the egg which has been released from the ovary secondly by the slashing movement of the cilia and the peristaltic movement of uh, contraction contraction of the uterus muscles there will be a movement of the egg cell uh, the egg over here and the egg is going to travel right from here and it is going right and settling itself somewhere here in fact later on it will be pushed also further down into the uterus so that is how the egg is going to travel through the oviduct uh, which is present here so it is the cilia lining of the funnel helps to pick up and push the release ovum into the oviduct subsequently the waves of muscular contraction passes of the walls of the oviduct push the egg down into the uterus the next is the uterus so this is the uterus the pear shaped body uterus is a hollow pear shaped 7 cm by 5 cm muscular organ situated in the pelvic cavity between the urinary bladder and the rectum so between the urinary bladder and the rectum is one particular pear shaped body which is called as the uterus it has two regions an upper white portion which receives the two oviduct and a smaller lower constricted part the cervix or neck so this has got two regions the two parts over here the upper part over here which is expanded which is the one which is connected to the oviduct and the lower part which is narrowed down which is the the ends of which are called as the cervix or the neck of the ov of the uterus the fourth part over here is the vagina the vagina is a muscular tube 10 to 15 cm long starting from the lower end of the uterus up to the outside so from the lower end of the uterus that is from the cervix to the outside of the body the complete canal the complete uh, canal over there is called as the tubular tubular structure muscular tubular structure which is around 10 to 15 cm long 
uh, is uh, called as the vagina. The vagina receives the male penis during, during copulation. So when there is sexual intercourse taking place at that time, it is this vagina which is going to uh, really, I mean, which is which is going to take the receive yeah it is going to receive the male penis inside so the male penis once it is in the erectile position when it has all the uh, muscles of the uh, the vacuoles over here completely filled and the erection position is there it can be entering into the vagina in this particular form so that is how it is going to be entering the female body part <coughs> now vagina receives the male penis during copulation the great Elasticity of this its walls also allow the passage of the baby during childbirth. Now, the walls of this vagina are highly, highly elastic in nature. They are so elastic, you can just imagine that it is from this particular small opening that even during the childbirth, the whole of the baby is able to be delivered. So, the, uh, the, that's why we can easily understand that how elastic is the vaginal uh, opening. The opening of the vagina in young females is partially closed by a thin membrane called hymen or virgin knot. So just uh, uh, in case of the young uh, females, so that is the young females, they have got a small film, okay, a, for, form, a small uh, film of skin which is present over here like a seal partially closing over here which is called as the hymen or the virgin knot so uh, this hymen is frequently ruptured in childhood due to strenuous physical act exercise or disease so it was originally called as a virgin knot so as to identify that the female has had an intercourse earlier in life or not but then it is always found that just some strenuous activities like cycling or some swimming or even some come another activities will be there would be po there will be possible reasons that this hymen or this virgin knot can get ruptured so that's why the uh, it was originally called as virgin knot but actually it is just a small film like structure called as hymen the fifth one is the outermost part of the female body and that is called as the vulva so the outermost part over here will be over here we can call it as vulva the external female genital is called as the vulva so external genital part the genital part so that is the uh, part which is seen outside from the body is the uh, vulva it contains independent opening of the urethra and vagina. So the vulva contains two openings, one on the top which is the urethra opening and another one will be the opening which will be the opening of the vaginal opening. So vaginal opening is separate and the urethral opening is separate. So in females, the vaginal opening is the opening through which the, uh, uh, the baby can come out or the insertion of the receiving of the penis can take place. Whereas the urethral opening is above that. So in the vulva position, there will be the two parts which will be the urethral opening and the vaginal opening. The sides of the vulva have two small fleshy folds. The Libia minora, lesser lips, and which are hidden by a large hairy folds. So the sides of the vulva, they are just they, they will be flaps like structures on there. So to close the uh, vaginal opening, so that is called as the Libia uh, minora and Libia majora. So lesser lips and greater lips, the so bigger and the smaller part. So coverings. So uh, the sides of the vulva have two small flashy folds, the Libia minora and uh, which are uh, lesser lips which are hidden by larger fo hairy folds, the Libia majora, greater lips. These folds are the equivalent of male scrotum. So the male scrotum may just say, have, say he, these this flaps which are there, they are the one which are similar to the male scrotum. In the uppermost angle of the vulva is in the front of the urethral opening is, a, is located a small erectile clitoris which is highly sensitive and is the equivalent to the male penis. So as you have the sexual uh, excitement or sexual uh, male penis gets uh, enlarged. Similarly, the female part may the just above the 
you read the opening there's a small kind of a projection so this particular projection small uh, projection is called as the clitoris so in just in front of the in upper front of the angle of the vulva in front of your ureter opening is located a small erectile a small erectile is there which is called as the clitoris which is highly sensitive and is equivalent to the male penis so the role of hormone in the reproduction so now we see the so this was the structure wise the structure wise what we see was the first part was the uh, ovary which produces the ova that is the egg and it is released into the oviductal funnel uh, to the oviduct and from the oviduct to the uterus the uterus ke ba outside me has cervix so uh, cervix ke baad mein sir the outer part is the vagina vagina ke baad ke side pe hai vulva so this is the parts or we can say of course this was the main primary part whereas the others are the accessory parts of the female uh reproductive organs so role of the hormone in reproduction the ovaries of the young girl starts functioning around the age of 10 to 14 years it starts releasing the ova ovulation at this stage in her life is known as puberty so when a male uh, when a uh, sorry when a female uh, starts ovulating that is the first sign of her puberty that is when the female has got matured enough that they can release the first egg that is called as puberty and that is the age group between 10 to 14 that the first time of uh, this maturity takes place and about the same time as the first ovulation the ovary also releases female sex hormone into the blood stream so that's the first time that the estrogen and the progesterone jo hai wo blood stream mein pehli baar it is going to be generated uh, in and will sent into the blood stream these hormones called estrogen are responsible for bringing about bodily changes such as growth of the mammary glands widening of the hips growth in the hair of the pubic region arm pits and an increase in the size of the uterus and vagina so as soon as the first ovulation or the first time the ovulation is going to take place so the first time there is corpus luteum and the first time there is estrogen being produced with the onset of the estrogen being sent into the blood stream automatically the body structure the secondary sexual characteristics of the female starts getting into shape so that's the reason as soon as this happens there will be the growth in the mammary glands that the breast of the female there will be the widening of the hips why the widening of the hips required because that will automatically widen this area because this is the area where the baby is going to be going to be play or being going to uh, develop so that's why for accommodating the baby it is required that the hip girdle should be broader so that's why the female will have a broader hip hip when uh, she enters into puberty and then there is a growth in the hair in the pubic region armpits and increase in the size of uterus and vagina these developments developments are re referred as secondary sexual characteristics while another hormone secreted by the corpus luteum progesterone prepares the uterus for receiving the embryo now this is again a very important part which we'll be learning in the second part of the in the next part of the chapter that is menstrual cycle so the progesterone is preparing now estrogen prepared the body for the reproduction it prepared the body for reproduction means they gave uh, iska gird hip girdle increase hua breast ka development hua wo jab kya hua body will change so okay? the secondary sexual characteristics change whereas the progesterone is going to prepare the uterus for the embedment of the the implantation of the zygote so this uterus is going to develop and become fleshy or there will be the growth in the walls of the uterine walls so that the width of the uterine walls is going to increase so as to accommodate the fertilized egg so that's the thing that uh, by another hormone secreted by uh, secreted by the corpus luteum progesterone prepares the uterus for receiving the embryo in boys puberty takes place around age of 11 to 15 the testes start producing testosterone resulting in the development of sexual, sexual uh, secondary sexual characteristics like deepening of the voice 
growth of testes, penis, growth of the hair on the chest in the pubic region, armpit, chin and upper lips, moustache, etc. So all this, the moustache ka grow ho na, okay, armpits wagere mein, uh, hair growth ho na, uh, deepening of the voice, all these are the conditions which say that, okay, the puberty has been re uh, achieved by the male person. So uh, he has matured enough. So that is moustache and all, but com coming as a secondary sexual uh, characteristics of males. So what is puberty? Puberty is a period during which immature reproductive system of boys and girls mature and become capable of reproducing. So it is that particular indication by the body or it is that particular age of the body where the immature reproductive organs of the male or the female are going to get matured. So the uh, maturity of the immature Puberty organs takes place at puberty. At age 10 in girls, first sign of enlargement of breast. In boys at 11 years, the enlargement of testes is the first signs of puberty. So the first sign of puberty is shown at the age of 10 in case of girls and in the age of 11 for boys. So this is about the puberty and this is also about the female reproductive organs. Now we talk about how the female reproductive organ is going to change or they are going to uh, have the necessary changes done for itself for, so as to accept the embryo in the body. So the progesterone ka jo kaam hai, wo hum log abhi which is called as menstrual cycle, which we will do it in the next video.